right, good evening, Victory Church family. It's time for Sunday night church, and we're going to get into the Word of God. We praise the Lord uh, for the day that He's given to us, and uh, Mother's Day, we praise the Lord for all the mothers, and we just thank the Lord for, uh, for their influence upon our lives. And so I hope uh, you've, got, uh, you've got a mother out there that loves you, that you'd show her uh, love uh, today, and, and uh, hopefully they enjoyed some of the chocolates and uh, the things that they got. Uh, at church. And so uh, today we want to get into uh, the message tonight. Now, last Wednesday, uh, we preached uh, that message uh, about the, uh, the covenant of death and hell, talking about the seven-year tribulation. <clears throat> now, tonight, in tonight's message, uh, what I want to do is talk about uh, the Antichrist or the person uh, that is, that is Antichrist. Christian. That is, he is against or anti, he is against everything that Christ stands for. And so that's why we call him the Antichrist. Uh, in Scripture, you hear the spirit of Antichrist, and the Bible says in John chapter, or 1 John chapter number 2, that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, and it is working. Uh, you don't believe me, just look at the news and look at the, the fight that the church is having, uh, that anybody that stands up for Jesus Christ and truth, uh, that spirit of Antichrist pushes against them. But there will come a day when a person, a man, comes on the scene that is the personification of everything that evil is. Just as Christ was the personification of, of God in the flesh. That is everything God is and was and ever will be, Jesus Christ is in the flesh. That is why he said, my father and I are one. And so, so when the Antichrist comes, he will be everything that his father, the devil, will be. And I want to talk a little bit about him in the time that we have allotted but in your Bibles there, you'll uh, see 2 Thessalonians. We're going we're gonna to look there, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. But I want to say while you're turning there, I want to read you just a passage of Scripture. The Bible says in the Gospel of John chapter number 1 in verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, the man sent from, from God, whose name was John, John the Baptist, he would be preaching about the coming Messiah, about the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says about Jesus, when Jesus would come in Luke 4, verse 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That is the prophecy that Isaiah spoke over 700 years prior to Christ, that when the Messiah would come, he would be a healer. He would be a restorer. He would be, he would be a savior that would save and deliver his people from the bondage that the enemy had over them, that enemy which is Satan and sin. And so now Jesus steps on the scene as the healer. He's one sent from God to deliver the people. But now I want to talk about the Antichrist, who is a man sent from Satan to devour the people, sent to deceive the people, uh, sent to bring destruction upon everything that God ever calls good. In one last attempt for Satan himself to use the Antichrist, use the false prophet, both of which are mentioned in Revelation 13. We'll get there in just a minute. But Satan would use those two to bring himself into full power. And it works for just a short time. But then, because we know the back of the book, and we know that the Lord Jesus Christ always wins, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 that Satan's going to be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. I thank the Lord for that. Tonight I want to preach this message, a man sent from Satan, and I hope that in your hearts and in your minds we can understand a little bit more about what is coming, what is being set up right now. Everything we're seeing right now is being set up, leading up to the day when this man steps on the scene and the whole world hands him the kingdom. 
Everything is handed over to him. And, and then we see the great destruction that's going to come. And my friend, if you're saved, you can rest assured that you're on the winning side with Jesus Christ. And we don't have to worry about being there where that Antichrist is, is there moving about and doing his wickedness. But my friend, if you're not saved, if you don't have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's going to be your ruler one day. And he'll see to it that destruction comes to your house. But it doesn't have to be so. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day you give to us. And Lord, we love the Lord's day. Sunday, I, I can't wait till we can get back to uh, having a, a good, regular uh, Sunday. And I, I don't even know if it'll ever be regular anymore. I, I hope we appreciate it a whole lot more. And Lord, that it'll mean so much more to us. But Lord, you know my heart. You know, I just, I love to be in your house with your people. And God, I pray for that day to come. And Lord, we'll give you all the glory. Until then, we're just going to keep on doing what you've asked us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this Antichrist, I want to look at <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. And here we see that this man, just as Jesus is sent to be the Savior, he's come to be the scourge of the earth. Uh, he has come to set up his own kingdom for his own purpose and his, his, own, uh, uh, his own lust. And, and he's going to consume it upon his own lust in, in this world. And so as we look at this individual, uh, I want to look at just a couple things from 2 Thessalonians. This church was worried uh, about the coming of Christ. In, in fact, uh, some thought that they even missed the coming of Christ. Uh, some were very con confused. Uh, look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. He, he says that it was troubling, the tribulation to them that, that troubled you. He was saying, look, there's going to come a time when all of this troubling is going to end. And he talks about the coming of the Lord, when the Lord Jesus Christ shall be revealed. This is the second coming of Christ, not the, not the rapture of the church. He already dealt with that back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when they thought the resurrection had already passed. So, so there were some false teachers saying, well, the resurrection already happened, or, or that there was no resurrection from the dead. And so here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul deals with, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God wants his people to know that they will be raptured out. And, and, and after they're raptured out, now they have a question of when's all this going to happen? When's the end of the world? When is, when is all of this going to come to an end? And now he tells them, well, it's before the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we understand that on the time clock, let's look at the time clock real quick, Right now, we're in the day of grace. We are in the church age, and the next event on God's calendar is the rapture of his church. He's going to take his bride, his precious loved bride, out of the way, and then that son of perdition will be revealed. We'll talk about that right here. And then this seven-year period of tribulation and woe upon the earth, and then we see the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and his millennial kingdom, his thousand year reign. And then we see the last judgment of the earth and then into eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> verse number one, let's look at Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So he talks about, obviously, the coming of Christ and our gathering together to him. Now he's talking to the church, he's talking to the bride of Christ. So he's talking about the, the, the second coming of Jesus Christ that is coming. And he's also talking about our gathering together unto him. That is the rapture of the church. He mentions that already in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So he says, don't be worried about what's happening in the end. Don't be worried about when the rapture is coming. Don't worry that you're going to miss it. Don't worry uh, about the second coming of Christ and all the details. He says <clears throat> that you soon be not soon shaken or troubled. Don't let these things trouble you. Verse number 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That is apostasy. That is absolute heresy. That is absolute false doctrine being embraced as truth. 
And my friend, listen, we, we don't have to go into detail. We already see that happening right now. Lies are being accepted as truth, and truth is being shunned as a lie. And so here's what he says, that there's a falling away first. There is a great apostasy from the faith. There is a great turning and a corrupting of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who, now he's talking about this Antichrist, who is the son of perdition. The son of man, meaning that he's human. The Bible says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, or what is restraining, what is holding back. He says, now ye know what is withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. He said, there's something standing in the way so that that man cannot be revealed yet in his time. Listen, everything's on God's time clock, friend. This, this whole earth looks like it's spinning out of control and that nobody has it under control. But I tell you, God has it under control and it's all in his time. So the Bible says that right now there's, there's a restriction on the devil. There's a restriction on the Antichrist. But then the Bible says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. He, only he who now letteth will let or, or restrain. The word letteth here is the same Greek word here in verse 6 where it says withholdeth. It's the same Greek word. So he's saying uh, that there is one who is holding back the enemy. But when he lets him go, when he, when he says, that's it, you can go, then the Bible says right here, until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Who? The Antichrist. The wicked. Capital W. It's a name attributed to him. The Bible says that that wicked shall be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That is, that is what he's going to be doing. He's going to be lying, deceiving, working powers, doing miracles under the power of Satan. So my friend, listen to me. Satan has the power to work miracles. See, a lot of people think, oh, well, Jesus is the only one that has power to work miracles. No, the Bible says that Satan has the power to work miracles. He's restricted right now, but he has the power to do things. You don't believe, look at witchcraft. You look at witchcraft and, and all kinds of ungodliness that's out there, people putting spells and hexes on people, and, and look at the, the Hindu, uh, the, the, the African uh, black magic, the Obeman uh, that are there. I look at some of the islands and the mysticism that is there, how that, they, how that they can control people's minds and things. You think that's of God? Hey, listen, that, that uh, horoscope that you're reading, that palm reader that you're reading, those tarot cards, those Ouija boards, listen, the devil has got power, my friend, and he can work certain miracles. In fact, when it talks about the Antichrist, he's going to die, that man's going to die, and the power of Satan's going to bring him back to life, the Bible says in Revelation 13. So here's what I'm telling you. He has power, but he's being restrained right now by the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God that he has sent on this earth to be with his bride. The Bible says in John chapter number 14 and chapter 16 that the Spirit will come and comfort you. He's going to be your paraclete, the one that, that comes alongside of you and strengthens you and enables you. The Holy Spirit of God is teaching the church, leading the church, protecting the church, sealing the church. And then when he, look at what the Bible says, verse 7, until he be taken out of the way. He, he as in the Holy Spirit of God. He as in the one who is restraining the evil of this world. The very presence of the church, the very power of God that is evident in the church by his spirit is withholding all the wickedness that's in this earth. Can you imagine when every Christian's taken out of this place? Can you imagine when the Spirit of God moves out of this place? Now you say, what about, what about the Spirit working in the end times? What about, what about all that? Well, it'll go back to an Old Testament type 
uh, working. We don't have time to get into all that, but there's an Old Testament type working just as the Spirit of God would move at certain times. But he did not dwell in the heart of his believers in the Old Testament. Only in the New Testament. Now he dwells with us, in, in us, not just among us. I thank the Lord for that. But there'll come a time when the Spirit of God, yes, He still has power in the tribulation period, and He'll still be working, and there'll still be the work of God being done, even in those days, the 144,000 witnesses, they'll still be preaching the gospel. The angel will be uh, flying all around the, the earth preaching the everlasting gospel, the Bible says. The two witnesses of Revelations 11 will still be preaching the gospel and have a lot of con converts that would come to them. But my friend, listen, I'm talking about right now the bride of Christ who has the Spirit of God in dwelling in them, the Bible says, when that church is gone, when the rapture of the church happens, the Bible says there's going to be an unleashing time. So you say, what about this Antichrist? Is he here now? Well, here, let me answer this for you. Yes and no. And I don't know. <laughs> does that answer, is that, is that clear as mud? You got that? How do, what, what are we talking about? Well, if, if God chooses, which I don't know when Christ is coming back, I don't know, and no man knows the day or the hour. But if he was coming back, let's say he was coming back tonight. He's coming back tonight. And, and, and this is just hypothetical. But if he's coming back tonight, that Antichrist, that son of man who will take over, he's already alive right now. See what I'm saying? Because he will step onto the scene and bring things to himself. When all the chaos of you know, millions of people being raptured out of this earth and businesses failing, mortgages collapsing, the stock market down, all of this stuff. But it's going to get a lot worse when all this stuff happens. But let's just say it was really, really bad, and, and tonight was the rapture of the church. The, that son of perdition would already be here. Now, I don't know for sure. I can only say according to other biblical examples, Jesus Christ was 30 years old when he began his earthly ministry. It was at the age of 30 that the Jews would accept a man to be a religious teacher. And, and so what I say to you is, I believe that that Antichrist, when he comes, that he will, obviously he's the son of man, so he is human. He will also, I believe, according to Scripture, the fact that Jesus was 30 when he took uh, his place, that for the Jews to accept him, this man would have to be 30. See what I'm saying? So, so if, if, if the rapture is going to happen in, in five years from now, that man's got to be at least 25 years old right now. So he at least has to be 30 or more, according to just, just the biblical example. Now, I don't have a scripture. Please don't, don't misunderstand. I don't have a scripture that says he would be 30. But I'm just saying the example of Christ when he started his ministry. Everything that Christ does, here's what I want you to understand. Satan tries to duplicate that. Satan tries to mimic everything that he does in an evil sense. And so, so here this, this man, this Antichrist, is going to step on the scene. And I want to talk just a little bit about what he does. And, and just with the remaining time, I'm going to try to wrap this up in the next 15 minutes. So, number one, I want you to, I want you to see his malicious character. His malicious character. Now, his names reveal to us his malicious character. Uh, that is, in, in verse number three, he's called the son of perdition. That means, uh, the, the word perdition means ruin or loss or eternal damnation. And so the Antichrist, being the son of perdition, is one who brings and breeds death, ruin, and loss. He himself is ruined. He himself is condemned to death in hell forever upon God's judgment. In verse number 8, he is referred to as that wicked one. Verse number 8, that wicked, when that wicked uh, should be revealed. In Daniel chapter number 9, verse number 26, he's referred to as the prince that shall come. In Daniel chapter 11, verse number 21, he's referred to as the vile person that vile individual. And then in Revelations chapter number 13, he is referred to as the beast that comes up out of the sea. The beast that comes up out of the sea. Now, I mentioned this before, and I'll just say it briefly. Uh, in Revelation, there's two beasts. There are two beasts that we see. One comes up out of the sea. 
That is, up out of the nations, up out of the people. He is a Gentile. The Antichrist will be a Gentile. He's the last Gentile ruler that Christ will kill that will end the time of the Gentiles. Remember, the time of the Gentiles started at Nebuchadnezzar and will end with the death of the Antichrist, okay? He's the last Gentile ruler that will rule this earth. But the Bible teaches that, uh, obviously, in order for the Jews to accept him, he's got to have some lineage of, of Jew in him. So he's got to be of, of, a, of a Jewish descent somewhere for the Jews to accept him. So he rises up out of, out of the sea, which is up out of the Gentile nation, the sea representing all the nations of the world. And then the second beast, who is the false prophet, he comes up out of the earth. And in Scripture, throughout the very beginning of time, uh, up out of the earth and referring to the people of the earth has always meant God's people or Israel. So I believe that the false prophet, the religious leader, the religious uh, entity here uh, is going to be a, a Jewish man. And so here you have the Antichrist, which is the political figure, the political head of all. And then the Antichrist has his false prophet who's working his miracles and working things for him, all under the head of Satan himself. So you have a, a wicked trinity, if you will, a, an, an evil triune uh, false godhead that is going to be rising up. That is the name, his very names, the son of perdition, the wicked one, the vile person. He's the beast, just a ravenous individual. Uh, he's pictured as the beast that comes up out of the sea. That's the, uh, that's the political figure, the one world government that's going to control the world. My friend, listen, it's considered a beast because it's ravenous. And anyone that stands in his way is going to be taken out if you don't, do not confirm to the government that will come. His mission is very simple. We see his malicious character, but I want you to see his mission. His mission, just as Christ was to bring everyone to God, the Antichrist is to turn everyone to Satan. The mission of the Antichrist is to, is to destroy where the mission of Christ was to deliver. And so it's the exact opposite of everything Jesus came to do. The Antichrist is going to bring everyone into worship of the Satan. How's he going to do this? It, it, it's, very, it's very simple. His means. What are, what are his means? How is he going to go about this? The one world government. And we see it right here. In Revelation chapter number 1, or I'm sorry, Revelation chapter number 13, he comes up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and ten crowns upon his head. Now, we'll talk, we can talk about this a little bit later when time would allow a little bit more, uh, but, but here's what he says. He says seven heads, ten horns, and then there's ten crowns. It's very simple. He takes after his father back in, uh, back in Revelation chapter number 12. When the Bible talks about that great dragon having seven heads, and, and the Bible says uh, seven crowns upon his head and seven horns. There's a, there's a family resemblance there, isn't it? That, that Satan is going to come, and he uses this one world government, these, uh, these horns. It, it gives a description of what, they, of what they are. They are the nations that will come. The nations that, that come, the seven heads or the seven mountains. We'll, later we'll, we'll talk about that in Revelation chapter number uh, 17, where the, where the seven heads are the seven mountains on which he will rule. And these, uh, these ten crowns represent the kings that will be there. And, and all of these nations will pull together, but he will be the head over all of this. There will also be a one world religion. The Bible says in Revelation 13, Verse 11 through 15, it talks about uh, the false prophet that will come. He says, another beast coming up out of the earth had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as the dragon. So he's going to appear to be like Christ, but he is going to, uh, he's going to be speaking as the dragon. He, he, he would appear uh, to be working the miracles of Christ, but in fact, he's got the speech of a dragon. And the Bible says that all of this is, is verse number 12, look. He exercises all the power of the first beast. So what the first beast, what the, what the one world leader wants to accomplish, 
This, anti, or this uh, false prophet will be working all of his bidding for him, turning the people to him. The Bible says, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast who had a deadly wound that was healed. Now, we don't have time to go through all this, but back up in verse number three, the deadly wound that was healed was the fact that that Antichrist, that man, dies. Now, we don't know how he dies. We just know he dies with, uh, with, with a sword, uh, the Bible says. He dies with a sword, but we don't know who kills him or what. But the, the, the false prophet, through the power of Satan, raises him back from the dead. He had a deadly wound that was healed. Death was healed. Again, he's trying to, he's trying to imitate everything that Christ does. And so here we see, just as Jesus Christ was man, but he was God in the flesh, he died and came back to life. Now this man, this, this Antichrist is a man. He's going to die, and the power of Satan is going to bring him back to life. And the Bible says everybody's going to worship him. Boy, they're going to say, verse number four, who is like the beast? Who's able to make war with him? Nobody can beat him. He dies and comes back to life. And so through these miracles... Through the working of lying, through the working of deception, all of this stuff is going to come to a head. The Bible says in chapter number, or chapter number 13, verse 14, the Bible says, He deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So we see here that he's going to bring a one world government and a one-world religion. We see the government, how that everybody's going to be bound to him, nobody's going to make war with him. All the nations, uh, verse number 7, all the nations are going to come into power under the first beast. Then the Bible says, that's the political figure. Then, then the Bible teaches us that the second beast, who is the false prophet, who is going to be turning everybody's attention to that first beast through those miracles. That's the one-world religion. And so we see that when these people step on the scene, they're going to be working hand in hand, all under the umbrella of Satan himself. Now, you say, I, I, don't, I just don't know how he could do this. Well, listen, for 6,000 years, he's been manipulating people, friend. For 6,000 years, since the beginning of time, he's been conditioning people and blinding mankind. I mean, if we just look at how things are set up, Listen, uh, right now, we are one nation under God. Isn't that, isn't that what our motto is? One nation under God. It has always been the fact that we, we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and because He governs us, we would be kind to our fellow man, and we could live free and, and, and just have uh, America and, and be able to help our neighbor and to be able to help this other, but we're free. But now, because of all the wickedness of man, everybody wants to make a law. One bad thing happens. Oh, let's pass a law. One bad thing, help, let's pass a law. So one evil person does an evil deed. And instead of just punishing him, no, now everybody has to suffer. One bad man takes a gun and kills somebody. Now all of a sudden, it's the gun's fault. Let's get rid of all the guns. Well, wait a minute. What about me and my guns? What, what about me and my freedom? I should be able to have my firearms. I never hurt anybody. But, but yet, the liberal crowd, the socialist crowd, the ungodly crowd, and I'm going to tell you the anti-Christ crowd, no, 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 they don't want any competition. They don't want any competition, so no, let's pass these laws. We're going to govern people. And, and as government gets bigger and bigger and bigger and tightens down on people, that leads us into the time of the anti-Christ. We have a very, uh, very large percentage, of, especially in our young people, who are following after these goofballs, and I ain't going to mention any names because there's so many of them, that are socialists. Listen, socialism is not American. Amen? Socialism is of the devil. Why? Because <clears throat> here the Antichrist is going to bring everybody in. Oh, you come to me, I'll feed you. You come to me, I I'll help you. He's deceiving the people even right now where we give up our autonomy, we give up our independence. And, and listen, every law that has been passed since the founding of our country, even, even if a law is for my protection, it still takes a piece of my liberty. It takes a piece of your liberty. And so the more laws that are passed, the more of our liberties we give away. 
And so eventually, listen, there's no more liberty to give. I was talking to Brother Tony the other day. I said, you know what, you know what it's like? It's like a bank account. You've got a bank account that is stocked full of liberty. And everybody starts making withdrawals on that. And after a while, you have no more liberty to give. After a while, listen, there'll be no more freedoms for you to give up. And then what? They ain't going to put them back in. I can guarantee you they ain't making any deposits. But the enemy wants to take your liberty, take your liberty, take your liberty, bring you into bondage, bring you into bondage, bring you into bondage. And that's exactly what the Antichrist does. You say, how does he do this? Let me just give you a couple examples, and then we're going to close this thing up, okay? We can look back to the past hundred years, okay? Look at the past hundred years. I, I think about the European Union. I think about the euro uh, dollar, the, the cashless system. We've been talking about how chipping people is getting very popular. Uh, how the, I just saw, uh, I think it was in, um, oh, I want to say Minnesota or Wisconsin. Please don't quote me. I just watched that news clip uh, just the other day. Uh, there was a factory where uh, these, and it did just happen today, this was, uh, this was a year or two ago, where, where these people, all the workers, they talked them into getting chips put in their hand so that when they would come to work, they could just clock in, boom, right there. And when you would go to the vending machine, when you go to the vending machine, you punch in what you want and you just hold your hand up there and guess what? It just, it just takes it right away, automatically debits it out of your account. Think about this now. Now, all of this technology is getting more. What is it? It's control. It's control to know. You, you know, you could take your cell phone, and, and if the government wanted to, if the government, they could, they could know where you are. They know, they can track you. In fact, I just saw a, 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 a news article. <clears throat> now, this was back in, uh, right when this COVID uh, started, and I think it was uh, April or uh, March. No, it was April, that California was talking about if and when we open back up and do all this stuff, there would be six major guidelines to which they would open back up. And one of those guidelines was tracking people, making sure that the sick stayed where they were and that the healthy stayed away from them. Think about this. This was on, this was on national news. That, that don't get a whole lot of uh, airtime, does it? Because people don't want you to know about that. The government tracking you. All of this, all of this is going to come to a head here. Uh, this cashless system, uh, the, the European Union, the World Health Organization pushing all kinds of vaccinations and poisons into you. Isn't it interesting that all those vaccinations they want to give you, none of them wealthy people and high to do's want anything to do with? That, that's amazing to me. That they don't want nothing to do with the very vaccinations that... Uh, they're going to try to give us with, but that's how they're going to do it. They're going to control people. Well, if you don't do this, your kids can't go to the school. If you don't take this vaccination, you can't go into our store and buy and eat and sell and, and so forth. And so here we have the means. How is he going to do it? Well, he's already been doing it. He's already been doing it for all these times. You know, the European Union, let me just tell you this. Those European countries, which is the, which is the stage, if I will, can say this, the stage for end time events, that European Union, that all those nations are coming together, making their, their treaty, they called it the Treaty of Rome. That's interesting. The Treaty of Rome back in, back in March, it was actually March 25th of 1957. So they just had an anniversary. 1957, that it would be at this place in Rome that they would come together and they signed this treaty. Now, now listen carefully. This treaty was signed in, in, in Rome, Italy, on a hill, one of the hills, called the Capitoline Hill. The Capitoline Hill. It is one of the seven hills that make up the city of Rome, which is the, the city of, of seven mountains. Seven heads. It's interesting that you can go to the book of Revelations, and in chapter number 17, where is the beast sitting? Where is he? The Bible says that he's sitting on, on seven heads. The Bible says in, in verse number 9, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Rome has always been known as the city of seven hills. 
It's interesting that this European Union that was developed back in 1957 signed their treaty on the, on the, on the, the highest of those hills, on the most prominent of those hills, the Capitoline Hill. It was thought by Rome that that hill was supposed to be eternal and indestructible. That's why they signed that treaty on that hill. Thinking that, hey, just as Rome is indestructible, just as she is so powerful, so is this covenant going to be. That's interesting. That the European Union came to, came to form on that, on that very hill. You can go back into... The League of Nations back in 1920, after, after World War I. And how the League of Nations came together after World War I and said, you know what, we can't let this happen again. And I think it was 51 countries that kind of came together. Then later on, after World War II in 1945, that League of Nations was, was morphed into what we now know as the United Nations. And all of it has always been under the guise, it says right on their mission statement, world peace. World peace. How can you have peace without the Lord Jesus Christ? And yet that's what the world is striving for. The Antichrist is going to come. All, his kingdom is already being set up is what I'm telling you. Uh, the, the fact that the United Nations now is ruling uh, you know, in different parts of the earth. Now, now, I know it's voluntary. I know it's voluntary. I know right now it's all, if we don't want to be in the, un, uh, the, the United Nations, we don't have to. And there are two nations who are not in that United Nations. <laughs> you, you, know, you know the two that aren't? The two that aren't is the Vatican City, where the Pope is, and Palestine. Go, go think about that for a little bit. That, that they volunteer, they do not want to be a part of it as of last year, 2019. But we look at that, and right now we say, oh, it's voluntary, but one day it won't be. One day it won't be. And all these nations are coming together. A lot of these uh, pushes for all the vaccinations are coming from the World Health Organization, which is an organization from the United Nations. And this WHO, the uh, World Health Organization, WHO, that group is pushing all of these vaccinations. Why is that? Control. Control. The United Nations, the World Bank Group. It's pushing. Listen, they, there was a, uh, a bailout uh, that I was just reading about, uh, and I just kind of skimmed over it, but the World Bank system was going to be allowed, that nations that were in trouble were going to be allowed to dip into that and pull money out of that, out of the United Nations, to be able to, to sustain them during this COVID-19. Now, now, well, wait a minute. So eventually, the world goes into debt to the United Nations, and then what? It's almost like all these nations are in debt to one another. They start fighting one with another. The wars and rumors of wars start happening. Famine comes. Destruction comes. So that the Antichrist comes in and says, hey, I got, a, I got, a, I got an answer for all this. Let's, let's do this, this, and this. What I'm saying to you, friend, is that the man that's sent from Satan, this Antichrist, he's coming and walking onto the scene, but this scene has already been setting up in the past hundred years of our nation. It's already been setting up for him to take, to take over. Now look, Revelations chapter number 13, I'm going to end with this. Revelations chapter number 13, there's so much more that we could talk about, about the Antichrist and, and how that all these organizations of the world are coming together, aligning. I didn't even talk about the World Council of Churches, how that the World Council of Churches is coming together, where it doesn't matter who you are, what you believe, we'll just kind of everybody take you in. That whole mentality is all coming to this. Revelations 13, verse number 7, and it was given unto him, that is the Antichrist, it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He is the one world leader. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. My friend, listen, here's what I want you to know today. This Bible gives us an insight as to what is going on. If you think this world's going to last forever, you got another thing coming. If you think this world is just all happy and everybody's going to be peace, love, and, and, and unicorns are going to jump out, and little pixies are going to sprinkle fairy dust, and everybody's just going to eat pie and, and have cake, and everybody's just going to drink lemonade, and it's going to be good, 
Listen, the devil's already, he's already deceived you. Because that's exactly what he's here to do. The man sent from Satan is going to step on this scene. It's already been set up for him. The end is coming. I promise you, according to the authority of God's word, it's all setting up. The signs of the times are all right there. The Bible says that they're going to make war with the saints. He's going to make war. Listen, there's already a war on Christianity. It'll get worse and worse. God will take his bride out. Then there's going to be some other things that happen after the bride is gone in the seven-year tribulation. Friend, I want to ask you this. The Bible says, who, whoever was not written in the book of life, that's who he makes war on. Is your name in the book of life? Are you saved? Do you know for sure if you die today, you go to heaven because you've trusted Christ your Savior? Friend, if you haven't, you're going to be food for this guy when he comes. Let's get it in our hearts right now. I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to do what's right so that when the rapture comes, I'm out of here. And all this foolishness, man, I don't have to deal with that. Let's go to the Lord and pray right now and ask the Lord for his strength. Father, we love you. We ask you that you would, uh, Lord, that you would reveal truth to the hearts of all these that hear. That people would understand that there is a satanic ruler coming one day. And his kingdom's already being set up right now. He will bring destruction upon this earth like it has never known. The Holy Spirit of God will step out of the way and, and allow him, as those seals are open, those seven seals, with every seal, he's allowed more and more and more and more. And God, it's going to get so wicked. God, I'm so thankful for your provisions upon your people. I'm thankful that as your child, I know I've got the victory in Jesus Christ. God, I pray that we would be strong in these days and not give in, not surrender. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that if anyone's not saved today, right now, they would, they would call upon the name of the Lord, ask forgiveness of their sin and be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, I want you to know that we're praying for you. I want you to know, man, there's some good stuff in this book. I'm telling you, you can just look at what the Bible says. Look at how it's lining up in the world. And I'm telling you, the clock is winding down. It's winding down. And this stuff's coming, coming to light. We're seeing this stuff happening right now. Let's carry the gospel message. Let's hold our heads up high because we are on the winning side in Jesus Christ. Go encourage somebody this week. Spread some good news. God bless you. I love you. And I'm praying for you.